Hey guys, welcome to a crash course on jQuery. In this course, we're going to be covering all the fundamentals of the jQuery JavaScript library. Now, before we get started, I just want to go over a few things before we jump into some code. So first of all, I want to talk about what jQuery actually is. It's a small, fast, and feature-rich JavaScript library. And it makes things a lot easier, such as DOM manipulation, event handling, AJAX, and much more. And it allows us to create extensive functionality with much less code than if we were to just use regular JavaScript. All right, so what you should know before attempting this course is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, you need to know HTML because we're grabbing HTML elements and we're using jQuery to uh, manipulate them to do different things with them. You need to know CSS because all of the jQuery selectors are the same as CSS selectors. Um, and then of course JavaScript, you need to know at least the basics just to to know for instance how to create a variable and what a variable is, an array, things like that. All right, you don't have to be a JavaScript whiz, but you should know at least the fundamentals. All right, so if you don't know these things, I do have plenty of videos on them if you want to go back and check those out and then come back and that would be fine. All right, so we'll be breaking this mini course up into a few different parts. So we're going to start with jQuery selectors. And this is where knowing CSS comes in handy. As I said, they use the same selectors as CSS does, um, whether it's the element itself, an ID, a class, uh, anything like that. And then we'll move on to event handling. So mouse events, form and input events. And then after that, we'll talk about DOM manipulation. So we can add, remove, and change things in the document object model. And then we'll also discuss some really helpful methods that jQuery offers to do various tasks. We'll talk a little bit about effects, such as fade in, fade out, slide up, and slide down. And we'll also look at the animate function. And then finally, we'll be working with AJAX methods that jQuery offers, such as load, get, post, and the AJAX function itself. All right, so if you like this course, this mini course, I would suggest checking out my 10 project JavaScript and jQuery course at Eduonix. You'll be working with all the stuff that we go over here and much more, and you'll get to build 10 different projects. Okay, right now I think it's only around 19 bucks, so it's well worth it. Um, I'll put a link in the description and that's it so without further ado let's get started on selectors all right so let's get started on the basics and jquery selectors now in my browser i have jquery.com open and there's a couple ways you can use jquery you can go ahead and download it from here and the latest version at this time is 3.1.0 um, you can also download version 2 which has a slightly different uh, API and then version 1 is only recommended if you need compatibility on um, browsers like IE6, IE7, and 8, which um, you know nobody really uses anymore. So we're going to be using 3.1.0. All right, now you can download it here and you can include it in your script. You can just uh, you know download it into your folder, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use the CDN, which is just an external link. Now, if you're building a production project, then you probably want to include it within your application, um, just so you can use it without an internet connection and so on. But just for simplicity, we're going to use the CDN. All right, so I don't know where is that available. Okay, so this is actually the link right here that we need. All right, now I have this empty folder, jQuery Crash Course, and when I'm done with the course, I will upload it to GitHub and I'll include a link to that in the description. But basically what we want to do is just create uh, our first folder, which is going to be called selectors. And inside there, we're going to have our index HTML. Okay, we'll go ahead and open that up. I'm using sublime text as my editor, but of course you can use whatever you'd like. So we're going to put some standard HTML tags in here. And for the title, we'll say jQuery crash course. And this is selectors. Now we're going to build kind of a really simple UI. Just we're going to have a header and then just an area to do all of our 
uh, output. All right, so let's go ahead and include jQuery. So we're gonna put a script tag here with a source and we're going to, not that, we wanna grab that and paste it in. Okay, that's the CDN. And that's all we have to do to be able to use jQuery. All right, um, now what we're gonna do is go into the body and we're just gonna build out the UI real quick. We'll have a header. I mean, this isn't needed, but I think it just makes things look a little cleaner. So in the header, we'll just put an H1. We'll say jQuery crash course. All right, and then under that, let's put a div. Give it an ID of container. And I apologize for that bang, and that's my son running around upstairs. All right, now everything we do is going to go in this container. Oh, as far as our HTML, our JavaScript is going to go down here. We're going to create a custom script tag there for us to put all of our jQuery in. All right, so let's save that and then we'll open it up in Chrome or whatever browser you want to use. And we just want to style it just a little bit. Okay, I'm not going to go overboard. I just want to add a little bit of styling to it. And where is it? Right there. All right, so we're just going to put this right in the header. We'll put our style tags. If you want, you can put it in a separate CSS file. I just want to have everything in one file. So let's start with the body. So we'll set, I'm going to set the font size to be slightly bigger than usual. So I'm going to set it to 17 pixels. We're going to set the font family to uh, Arial. And let's set the background to uh, light gray. And then I'm going to set the line height oops, to 1.5M. Okay, so that's the body. Now for the header, I'll set a background. It's going to be a dark background. So we'll say the text color will be white. And I'm going to give it a padding of 20 pixels. And we want everything aligned to the center. Okay, and then let's set a border bottom of four pixels. And we're going to make that black and solid. All right, and then finally we'll add a margin bottom of 10 pixels. Okay, last thing is going to be the container. That's where all of our output will go. So I'm going to set a width to 90%. It's going to be fluid or responsive. And set the margin to auto to push everything in the middle. And then just a padding of 10 pixels. All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so nothing too fancy, but um, you know we have some padding here, and we made the font a little bigger to make it a little more readable. All right, so enough of this CSS crap. Let's get into jQuery. Now we're going to be talking about selectors, so we need some elements to work with. I'm going to create an H1 here, and we're going to give it an ID of heading one. Okay, and in here we'll just say heading one and then let's put in a paragraph so we'll say P we'll give it an ID of power one and then I'm just gonna grab some dummy content to put in here so I'll paste that in and you'll notice that I do have a span around just a, a couple words here okay we're gonna work with that later and then what I'm gonna do is copy that H1 and that paragraph and then just put paste it in again I'm going to change this to H2 and Para2, but I'm also going to make them classes. Okay, we'll change this to Heading2. All right, now let's go down to our script tags here. And I want to use a selector to, let's say, grab the headings. All right, so Jake with jQuery, we use a money sign that represents jQuery. And in here, inside quotes, it could be single quotes or double quotes. 
Usually you see double quotes, but with myself, I like to work with single quotes. All right, so that's usually what I do by default. Even if I try to use double quotes, I'll end up switching over in the middle of the script to single quotes. So I'm just going to start with single quotes. So let's say we want all the H1. So we can put in H1 and then we can do something with it. In this case, I'm just going to call dot hide, which is a jQuery method. All right, so if we go ahead and let's first of all run it without that, I'll comment it out. And you'll see we have our two headings and paragraphs. Now if we say H1 hide and we reload, now you can see that all the H1s are gone, even the one that was in the header. So if we want to target a certain heading, we can use its, for instance, its ID. We have heading one here. So we can say H1, and then we're going to use the number sign for an ID, and then heading one. So now if we save that and we reload, you can see that only the heading one has been selected and is hidden. All right, and I'm just going to comment this out. I, I want to kind of leave all the code for you guys to have as a reference. So I'm also going to uh, put that back without the ID like that, and I'll just comment it out. Okay, now, of course, we can also use classes. So if we want to grab heading two, that has a class, so we'll say H2, and then classes are represented with dots. So we're saying H2 class heading two, and we want to hide that. So we reload, and that doesn't work. Um, oh, it's an H1. There we go. All right, now see how we have h1.heading2? We actually don't need this element. We could just say heading2 and save that, and you'll see it's still hidden. All right, so now even if we put a paragraph with the class of heading2, that would still be an effect that would still hide. Okay. Now we can use certain selectors and then use inner elements as well. So see how we have a paragraph here and then inside that paragraph we have a span. So what we could do is we could say paragraph and then span. And let's, uh, let's do something else. We'll change the color. We'll use the CSS method. All right, and I'm going to go over these types of methods later on. Um, Right now, I'm just focusing on the actual selectors. But CSS will take in a, a value or a property, let's say color, and we'll change it to red. Okay, so if we go ahead and save that and reload, now you can see that all the spans that are within the paragraph are red. If I were to take that span and put it outside of a paragraph, you'll see that it's, it's not red. If we were to remove the P here and just say span, then it would because now all spans, no matter where they are, will be red. All right, I'm just going to take that out. All right. Now we can even get more specific and use some of the CSS3 selectors. What I'm going to do is up here, still in the container, let me just tab that over. In the container, we're going to put in a UL, and let's just give this, uh, we'll give it an ID of list, and we'll put in a couple LIs here. We'll say list item. Copy that. Okay, so now we have this list to work with. Now, let's say that we want to grab this first list item. Okay, so what we could do is we can say uh, li, if we want to be more specific, we could say ul with the id of list and then li. And what we can do is we can put a colon here and then say first. Okay, and then we'll use the CSS method here. And we'll say color red. Oops. Save that. Reload. And now you can see that the first item of that list is now red. Okay. At the same time, we can do last, which I'm sure you can project what that's going to do. 
So last, and we'll change this to green and reload. And now you'll see that the last item in the list is green. Okay, we also have even, even and odd if you want to target those, the even and odd elements. So let's just copy that. And then we'll change this to even. And instead of the color, let's do uh, background color. Okay, we'll set that to, let's say, yellow. Save that, reload, and now every even element is yellow. All right, now, of course, we can also do odd. So let's change that to odd. And for the background color, we can also use hexadecimal values. So we'll put a um, light gray. All right. Now, what if we want to choose, let's say, every third item? We could do that using an nth value or an nth child selector. So let's copy that. And we're going to change this to nth-child. And that's going to take in a parameter. We're going to say 3n. Now, you can put all kinds of formulas in here, but I'm not going to really get into that. Uh, that's more CSS3 stuff. So for this one, let's change the property to list style and we'll set this to none and what that'll do is it'll remove the bullets okay so we'll save that reload and now you can see that every third doesn't have a bullet okay so we can pretty much target these items however we want so now what I want to do is move on to inputs so up here I'm gonna put in an input and this is gonna have a type of button and we'll set a value of we'll just say button one Whoop. input doesn't need an, an ending tag all right and then we'll put a submit type and let's put a text type okay that doesn't need a value all right, so if we reload, now we have uh, a button, a regular button, a submit button, and a text. So we can actually use the type attribute as a selector. So for instance, let's say, let's say that we want to grab um, all of the button types. So what we could do is say colon button, and then we'll say dot hide. Okay, so if we reload that, you'll see that the button is now hidden. Could also take submit, which I should probably change the text. We'll say submit, reload, and now that's gone. Okay, and then finally, if we want the text, now the text is gone. So you can use that as a selector as well. Now we can also work with attributes as selectors. So what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to create a couple links. Okay, so let's say this goes to google.com. And then this one will go to yahoo.com. Okay, so we get two simple links. Let's reload that. And let's say we want to change all of the elements that have an href attribute. Okay, we want to use that as a selector. So what we can do is in here, we'll put in some brackets and we'll say href. And then let's do dot CSS and we'll set color to red all right so let's see what that does we reload and now both links are now red now we can take it a step further and we can actually target the actual value of an attribute so let's say we want we want the element with the href value of yahoo.com so we'll go uh, in here we're going to put a and then some brackets and then we'll say href equals 
http yahoo.com and then we'll just use our css method here and we'll say color green so now if we go and we reload you'll see that the yahoo link is now green okay so we can target attributes as well as the attribute values and then we also have the asterisk which will grab everything okay so if we were to say we'll pop that in there and we'll say dot hide and we reload <laughs> everything is gone okay because this is just a wild card for anything all right i'm going to comment that out All right, so hopefully this helps you with understanding what types of selectors we can use. Okay, we can use the element themselves, we can use IDs, classes, um, we can nest selectors, we can use the CSS3 pseudo selectors. All right, so plenty of ways to do it to, to grab certain elements. All right, so that's it for selectors. Now we're going to move on to events.